Hey you guys, Storm here with episode 5, I believe, of the Let's Make a Pokemon game. And in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is extending what the player's class is, and then the Pokemons as well will be a part of that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drive straight into this. We're going to go into the uh, player in this groups folder. I'm going to create a new c sharp group, and that's going to be called Player. We're going to open that one up. So this is just going to go over everything that player holds, so like his inventory and the Pokemon that he currently has, uh, things like that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, get off straight away and have a uh, import. So we're going to use system.collections.generic and this just allows us to, uh, to use a list, which is uh, what we need. So we're going to have a public list of uh, base Pokemon. And we're gonna say this um, Pokemon. Uh, uh, own Pokemon. And this will just allow us to um, keep control of what Pokemon we have. We can access them and remove them later on for when we go into the battles. Um, we'll go into the uh, base poke, uh, sorry, play moving class just really quickly. And I want to add in a uh, public pool uh, is allowed to move. And we'll also just add the void start. And so what the is allowed moves is, um, will allow us to do is turn off the player's movement when we need so for example if he's in a battle we just want to turn off player movement so he stops walking around uh, this was the issue that we had in the last episode so say and is allowed to move which means that in the game manager uh, we'll also want access to the player so we have a public uh, game object and this will be the player so when we enter a battle we want the player Dot get component, and we want to get the player movement class, and we just want to say he is allowed to move is equal to false. That would just stop him from moving. We can check that by going into Unity, and if we walk and get hopefully into a battle, uh, you'll see that we <laughs> two six. Uh, so what we need to do quickly is just go to the game manager and assign the player to the game manager. Um, so now if we walk around and we get into a battle, for example, now we can't walk around until we eventually leave the battle. Okay, so that's sorted, that was our last episode problem. What we're going to need to do now is go into our game manager and we're going to import a new list, so it's going to be using system.collections.generic again, and we're going to have um, a public list of base Pokemon and this will be all Pokemon just so we have a list and it's equal to uh, a new list of base Pokemon. Next thing we want to do is go to the base Pokemon class and we're going to be handing, um, handling evolution here. So what we want to do is just have a public uh, class, sorry, sorry, sorry. We would make it a serializable attribute, so we do a system that is serializable. This allows us to edit in the editor. So we do a public class of Pokemon Evolution. And it will need a um, public base Pokemon, and it will be uh, next evolution. And then public base Pokemon. Sorry, public int uh, level up level. So now, if we come up to here, uh, we'll say public pool um, can evolve, and then if it can evolve, we'll also just add in the uh, public Pokemon evolution. This is just how we can store it. 
Uh, so in the game manager, we now have access to the Pokemon, which is where we'll grab it in the player. Um, sorry guys, just had to step away and do something real quickly. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is um, we want to add the moves that our Pokemon have learned and can do. Uh, so what we want to do is just go over to our uh, game manager class again. We'll come down to the bottom and we'll say assistant.serializable again uh, just so we can access it. We'll go a public um, class move uh, Pokemon uh, moves. For now we'll just say moves, we might change the name a little bit later on. Uh, we'll give it a string name um, Um, what I was going to mean to add later on uh, was a stat sort of thing. So we'll do another system dot serializable, and it will be a public class called. Um, uh, we'll just say stat for now. And so the stat will just have a public float of a minimum, and then a public float of a maximum. Uh, what we'll also have is a public enum, and this will be move type. And for now, we'll just have attack, uh, defend, and then a world. Just so if we have like a teleport or a fly, for example. Um, so we'll have a uh, public move type, move type, and then we'll also have a public uh, stat, and then. Um, move stat. What we can also do is go over to our base Pokemon and we'll have a uh, public stat for its, uh, rather than having the base HP and max HP, we'll have uh, HP stat and then we'll go for the same with our attack. So we'll have a public stat for our attack stat and then for our defense as well. So if we go back to our game manager class, what we can do is we have a public list. Sorry, a public list of uh, Pokemon moves. And we'll say all moves. Uh, we'll come down to Pokemon moves because there's a few more things that we uh, want to add into it. And uh, the first of that is being... Um, so in our base Pokemon, what we have is uh, public enum Pokemon type. What I'm also just... I'm, I'm just going to change a few of these up. So I'm just going to say electric, um, flying ground, rock steel, fire, water, grass. Uh, yeah, electric, I'll add in a few more things, so we'll have fighting, and we'll also have normal. Uh, so what we can do is take from the Pokemon type, uh, we can put that into here, so we have public Pokemon type, um, move type. It'll also need a... Um, sorry for the move types, we'll just change this up a little bit. I uh, will do physical, uh, special, and then status. So it's the same thing I meant before, um, but yeah, uh, we didn't actually need defense. I just thought uh, special is like if you like poison them or something similar to that. Um, so it changes up here to category. Uh, the next thing we want to add is public int. PP, and that's the max PP it can have, um, so 30, etc. Uh, we'll add in a public float for power, so this is the power that it can deal, and then a public float for its accuracy. Uh, and you made these all lowercase accuracy, and uh, so that would just be how often it's going to hit the target. What we're going to do now is go to our player class, I'm going to change this up a little bit. Uh, down here, we're going to do another system dot serializable. Uh, sorry, serializable. 
and it'll be a public class for owned Pokemon. And what we'll do is um, give it a public uh, base Pokemon, and then we'll say the Pokemon. Uh, we can also give it a nickname if they choose to give it a nickname. So the public string and nickname. We will have a public um, int for the Pokemon's level, and we'll also have a public uh, list of the Pokemon moves. Uh, I just want to make sure I spell that correctly. Uh, yeah, Pokemon moves, and we'll just say the moves. So this is just what we'll have. Um, and it will keep it in the inventory for us, it will just keep it all in one nice new place. Uh, so if you just jump over to Unity quickly, check we have no errors. Perfect. Alright, so now we have the uh, base class. What I want to do now is just add in a few more uh, quick functions into the game manager. Uh, so that we can handle when we enter battles. Uh, so the first will be a uh, public void. Um, get Pokemon by um, rarity so we'll just type in here a rarity rarity in here we're gonna create a, a new list of base Pokemon and this will be return Pokemon and this will be equal to a new list of base Pokemon uh, so now we're going to for each through our um, old Pokemon really quickly. Uh, for each old Pokemon, Pokemon. Uh, sorry, for each base Pokemon, uh, Pokemon in all Pokemon. Uh, we just want to say if Pokemon dot uh, rarity is equal to rarity, then we just want to uh, return Pokemon dot add uh, Pokemon. Uh, sorry, we need two equal signs there. And then at the end of this, we just want to change this from a public void to a public uh, list of base Pokemon. And then here, we just want to uh, return our uh, return Pokemon uh, like such. <coughs> uh, so it'll be a one that we can use when we're entering battle. Um, yeah. So I'll uh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um, I will just add in one more right now. Uh, there'll be a bunch more that we have to add in later. But for now, we'll just say public uh, base Pokemon. Uh, this will be get Pokemon, sorry, get random Pokemon from uh, list. And this will just take a list of base Pokemon, uh, Poke list. So in this, we'll just create a new base Pokemon, uh, Pokemon, Poke for now. And then down here, we'll return Poke. Up here, we just want to set a Pokey uh, equal to a new base Pokemon. Uh, so in here, what we want to do is um, we'll say public int. Um, sorry, we don't need public. We'll just say int uh, Pokey index is equal to random dot range uh, between zero and uh, Pokey list dot count. And this will be focus this dot count take one. Uh, so you don't need those squiggly braces. And uh, so then we can also now just set pokey is equal to the pokey list uh, pokey index. And that's how we just get a random Pokemon. Uh, so for instance, what we could do is um, we can just say base Pokemon battle Pokemon is equal to uh, get random 
Pokemon from list, and then we can just say get Pokemon by rarity, and then we can chuck in rarity right there, and that'll just get us a Pokemon that we'll be battling. Alrighty, so that's been episode uh, five, I believe now. I uh, hope you guys have been watching, and the next episode will be actually implementing the Pokemon, and then the episode after that will be the battling and the moves of the Pokemon. Um, following that, we'll have the inventory and things uh, that are also added in the game. Uh, we'll be working on the camera moving and then the world in further ones, and then uh, towards the end of the series we'll start doing the animation of things, and just printing up the code and printing up the world and things like that. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this episode. As always, you can contact me on Twitter at BeastNormGames, or you can just leave a comment in the below for suggestions. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time.